Okay, uh, welcome to session 2A of ICDEC 2021. Uh, uh, I am Dr. Song Su Han of uh, Comira, and I, I'll be uh, re, uh, presiding the second session of today. Uh, subtitle of this session is Seeking Mutual Cooperation on Increasing Global Uncertainty. And there are five papers to be presented today. And the uh, first one uh, will be started by uh, <clears throat> Dr. Lee Zian of Kyunghee University. She will be presenting uh, a paper on a paper presentation. Is there a simultaneous casual relationship between China's outward FDI and diplomatic relations? Please welcome Dr. Lee Zian. Okay, let me start my presentation. As Dr. Han mentioned today, I'm going to talk about simultaneous cultural relationship between China's OFDI and diplomatic relations. So my talk will be in six parts. In the first part, I will be brief about the research background. Economic diplomacy is becoming important in bilateral economic cooperation. So good diplomatic relation may lead to more OFDI and more OFDI may cause more economic diplomacy. Nowadays, more and more polit politicians had international trips and China is also follow this trend to promote their foreign policy. For example, since President Xi took power, the Belt and Road Initiative is the most important foreign policy. And he unveiled this policy during visit Kazakhstan and Indonesia in 2013. After that, this policy is what promoted by Premier Li during official visit to Asia and Europe regions. So next slide, we look at the status of state and official visit. So in this per, uh, from 2013 to 2019, in this period, President C paid 98 state visit to 69 country and the Premier Li paid 61 official visit to 48 countries. So let us look the picture, uh, which is in your left side. Red means China and the blue shows a country with a higher frequency of visit. So from this picture, we can know that uh, they, the most visited country is Russia and uh, followed by Kazakhstan and Belgium, Germany and uh, United States. So let us look the bar chart in red color. So from this bar chart, we can know that uh, they most visited Asia and Europe regions. Now we look the status of the China's OFDI. So look this bar chart, the red color means OFDI and the gray color shows inverted FDI. Uh, from this bar chart, we can now two point, one point in 2015. In this year, China's OFDI exceeded inverted FDI for the first time. And the next point is the about size. As you can see, the red bar is continued to increase until 2016. And FDI is shows decreased from 2017. And, but in 2019, Chinese OFDI flows become second largest around the world. So from this, we can see that China has transformed from foreign investment destination to a global investor. So this study aims to analyze the simultaneous cultural relationship between China's OFDI and the diplomacy. So there are three things to consider. First, to understand the network relationship between economy and diplomacy. We perform text mining using the official announced of Ministry of Foreign Affairs on the state and official visit. Second, we set the simultaneous equation model to uh, resolve to 
causality problem. And final, finally, we also tested whether the simultaneous causal relationship between OFDI and the diplomacy applies to developed and developing countries. So this is aims is met in the following two ways. First, text mining using the news. Second, empirical estimation is using panel data between China and 146 host countries. So now let's move to literature review. And previous studies largely divided into two aspects. One is FDI and politics. Another is FDI and economy diplomacy. So after two world wars, the growing international cooperation in reduced barrier to capital flow uh, can promote the more peaceful world. So in the early time, many studies mainly follow the FDI and the politics, such as political risk and the political stability or instability. So the studies of FDI and the politics is uh, very diverse and rich. So recently, uh, the global environment is, has become more complicated than before. So an increasing number of researchers are focused on FDI and economic diplomacy. So they expanded this expanded the studies about the economic diplomacy uh, from the field of economy and the policy. So they are clearly related to uh, finishing or handing over the large of investment project such as foreign office years and visit conflict diplomacy. But most importantly, many uh, scholars mentioned, questioned that possibility of simultaneity relationship between FDI and uh, economic diplomacy. So therefore we check that whether is there really exist interconnect, interconnected relationship between economy and diplomacy. So we use text analyze there have three aims to consider. First, understand the major topics. Second, make sense of word pairs in the context. Finally, compare key topics of the economy for developed and the developing country. So there have three kinds of methods for text analysis. So first one is word frequency analysis. Second, covert analysis. Finally, semantic network analysis. So this slide, we talk about the research framework. Uh, there have three steps for text analysis. The first step is crawling. Second step is data pre-processing. Final step is analysis and the visualization. So uh, we moving, moving on, another point is text analysis result. So the, there have, we got the three kinds of results. The first one is word frequency analysis result. From this picture, we can know that the topics of the Chinese senior leaders visit is cooperation, development, China, people relation, and international economy, so on. Second is a semantic analysis result. So the centrality word in the blue boxes, so cooperation, international economy, China development, mutual exchange. Next, uh, in the green box is word groups about uh, pre, uh, senior leaders names and about diplomatic relations and economy such as investment trade and another is about foreign policy, Silk Road Initiative. So finally, we focus on yellow regions. In the centrality world is international. And they, this world is connected economy and uh, relations in two sides. So from this, we can know that 
in the international economy and the international relations is interconnected. So finally, um, cover the analysis result. Some words are centrally located and uh, linked to developed and developing countries. But uh, like as nuclear security, economic growth, climate change and free trade is more important in developed country than developing country. And some key words such as investment, energy investment and infrastructure construction, product capability and mutual development is mentioned high frequently in the developing countries. So to conclude the text analysis result, first, we can know the major topics of Chinese senior leaders visit. Second, from the semantic network result, we can know that international economy and international relations are interconnected. Finally, the covert analysis results shows that China's diplomatic issue and the strategy for the developed and the developing country are different. So this slide, I just summarized the result of the previous reviews and the text analysis. The first one is previous studies had only analyzed the relationship between economy and diplomatic activities in the one direction. It means previous studies proposed the effect of economic on diplomatic activities or the effect of diplomatic activities on economy. Second, the effect of diplomatic relation on FDI in different types of countries is highly heterogeneous conclusions. And third, the large body of studies on the impact of the economic diplomacy on FDI has still not addressed the simultaneous causal causality problem. So finally, from the text mining results, we can know that economic and international relations are interconnected. So in this study, this study could expand previous studies. And this study also provide theoretical and methodological insight by combining big data and empirical analysis to consider the simultaneous cultural relationship between economy and diplomacy. So next slide is about the research hypothesis and there have three kinds of expected sign. Uh, one is cover the whole countries and another is a second is only cover the developed country. And last one is only cover developing countries. So now we come we come to the next point, which is about research model and data. So for two uh, address simultaneous, simultaneous uh, causality problem, we set the two equation. One is for uh, the determinants of OFDI. Another is the determinants of visit. So this slide is describe the variable. So our dependent variable is OFDI and uh, visit and the independent variable is largely divided in three aspects. One is OFDI factors, second is visit factors, finally is common variables. So in this study, we used three stage least square estimation for our empirical analysis. So reduced form equation is from the structure equation. So now I want to describe about empirical results. So this table shows that empirical results when we use the four sample in this study. So in the first line, we can know that the effect of the visit on OFDI is positive and significantly at the 10% level. And OFDI, the effect of OFDI on visit is positive positive and significant in the 5% level. So consequently, we can know that uh, the China's OFDI and uh, diplomatic relations have a, is a positive simultaneous relationship. And moreover, every independent variable have 
uh, expect uh, allowed expected sign except proven or your reserve. In addition, we investigate developing and developed countries. And uh, in developing country, we can know that the effect of visit to one OFDI have is positive and, and statistically significant in the 10% level. And OFDI, the effect of OFDI one visit is positive and significant in the 5% level. And look at the developed the countries, mm, the visit one OFDI is negative effect and the, OF, the effect of OFDI on visit non-significant in the developed countries. So consequently, the simultaneous causal relationship only applied in the developing countries. So to sum up the result, first, China's OFDI and the visit have a positive simultaneous causal relationship between each other. Second, uh, according to the country classification, the regression results shows that let China's OFDI and the visit have positive simultaneous causal relationship only in the developing countries. And finally, the short-term diplomatic visit to variable is not traditional, but their effectiveness is apparent. And I'd like to end with limitations and the future studies. The data used in this study only include China case. Therefore, generalizing our results to other data should be performed with care. Strictly speaking, our conclusion apply only to the China case tested here. Furthermore, economic, economic diplomacy and the conflict may not show relationships because the determinant of economic diplomacy variable is virtually constant. So in the future study, uh, needed to include more scopes of diet. So this is the last page. Thank you for your listening. Yes, thank you for uh, the presentation, Dr. Lee. And uh, uh, we'll limit to uh, uh, so the one question only after the, the each presentation uh, due to the time uh, restriction. If there is any uh, specific question you have on uh, Dr. Lee's presentation, please raise your hand on your screen. Yes, uh, Dr. I. Dida of uh, Yangon University of Economics. Have any questions? Oh, probably not. Uh, and uh, I have I have one question. If uh, do you have any uh, suggestions for uh, the uh, oncoming uh, 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 developing countries for how to uh, systematically mingle the FDI and the foreign diplomacy before they? Uh, on, on, their, uh, on their way into the development? Okay, actually, uh, one country's economy and diplomacy is un, uh, unconnected, but in, uh, from this study, we can know that they are have interconnected, especially in the developing countries. So if, uh, if in developing countries need more falling investment from China can uh, make a good relationship with China and use this policy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for your presentation. And uh, we'll move to the second presentation of the session. Uh, the second one is on the uh, the foreign direct investment and the trade openness impacts on the economic growth in Myanmar. Uh, by Do Wood Mone Fu. Please, uh, I'm not sure if I'm seeing the. Please huh? select right. Okay. Can I Good morning. Yes. 
in our staff presentation. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Wumo Pu. Yes, uh, this is my background of the story. Uh, Trade can promote the development of the country by improving its technological progress, technical know-how, greater access to resources, and expansion of market came from specialization, encourage strong competition and attract foreign direct investment. FDI can provide the development of living standard and the economic growth of the country. Trade openness in Myanmar can lead to an increase in export, raise domestic product. Myanmar is actively engaging with the global economy. Um, and economic growth is one of the most important determinants of economic welfare, national income or per capita incomes and products. Myanmar has large potential for growth with a young labor force advantage, natural resource proximity to a fast growing dynamic economic region. So it is necessary to study deal with both FGI and trade openness interaction are then influences on the economic growth and cultural relationship among them. This is uh, significant of the study. Uh, the data are all very diverse uh, annual time series for the previous years on uh, 1990 to 2019. So there's only the day observation are available to check the relationship between FGI and trade openness and economic growth. This study and point uh, an econometric approach of ELDN and entertain a systematic investigation of the relationship between FDI, trade openness, and economic growth. This is my objective of the study. Um, this is my objective of the study. This research aimed to two primary objectives. The first one is to is my and Africa relationship among FDI trade openness and economic growth and Myanmar to estimate the long range short and dynamics of trade openness, FDI, employment, capital store, and economic growth. This is my research guide and undefined research question because of uh, primary in and objective of the study research question were the sign. Um, because of currently lack of published material in Myanmar, leading, uh, limited existing literature on the story of Myanmar, contact as well, FDI, trade openness, and economic growth, they are in by us still and recess little, uh, little attention. My research question, how to explain trade openness, FDI, key economics variable impacts on FDI inflows in Myanmar? And the next question is, the, has FDI trade openness been significantly impacted impacts on the economic growth in Myanmar, Lauren or Shoran? This is my research question. This is my literature review. Uh, literature review in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this table, the the other review the previous and bigger research theory, gather results and explain them briefly here. Many researchers choose the method of estimation depend upon, depend upon the nature, size, time range, and types of data. Based on the empirical theories, it is given out the different aspects of the relationship between FDI and its determinants and how the country address FDI with different approach. Um, because of the lack of generally accepted theory for FDI determinant, this leads to the researcher to rely more on empirical research and evidence to explain how FDI emerge and what sort of determinants address FDI. This is my methodology and methods. This is the research design. <clears throat> Research design, this research paper employs the NIMA and your time series data to explore the short and long run relationship among trade openness. This is the pandas variable is the GDP, uh, is, well, variable is Y, and the in the pandas variable is FTI, trade openness, employment, and capital stock. The economic growth rate is the used as the dependence variable and FDI entry openness employment capital store in last periods are used in the independence variable in the story. The combination of Junirudat testing, ADF DEX, and Dikifula DEX, and ALD approach to co-integration was introduced to test the hypothesis relation covering data for the 30 years from 1992 to 2019 in Yemen. Firstly, the station test was carried out by using ADF and Tikifula text to test whether the variable that was added that the other choose to apply ELDA approach to co-integration to check the relationship and then the variable coefficient. The ELDA approach model 
will also provide an alternative test for examining the significance of the impacts of macrophoses composition, including FGI, triopenes, employment, GDV, and capital stock in Myanmar. At the start of co-integration approach, the Lauren Shoran coefficient, coefficient will be contacted. This is my hypothesis of the story. Uh, hypo my hypothesis of the story, according to the research objective and research question, the following hypotheses are constructed for for long-term relationship with uh, economic growth. My hypothesis why a trade openness FDI have impacts on economic growth in Myanmar during the period on 1990 to 2019. Hypothesis to a trade openness has a negative relationship with the economic growth of Myanmar in Lauren as well as Shoran. Hypothesis three is FDI in Myanmar play an important role in Myanmar. Contribution of the story, this research comprised a systematic investigation addressing the FGI, trade openness, and economic growth story in the context of Myanmar. This research story contributed the growing literature by integrating the determinants of FGI and trade openness impacts on economic growth in Myanmar economic development. Uh, this research story imply an econometric approach or uh, ARDL and undertake a system investigation of the relationship between FDI and trade openness and economic growth. Furthermore, current theory explores the relationship FDI and trade openness and economic growth using a case or international business activities in Myanmar by focusing on the periods from 1992 to 2019. This is my African story on the impacts of trade open FDI employment and capital store on economic growth in Myanmar. This is the ADF unit checks. <clears throat> um, ADF, the ADF unit root test is uh, argumented decay fuller unit root test. The standard unit root test, namely argumented decay fuller test and DF is the decay fuller test we're applying to determine the degree of stationary of the variable used in the model. The test was conducted with intercept and trend specification. This data show that computer results or time series data, real GDP, FDI trade openness, capital store and employment. According to the test, Data result as shown in this data for very very GDV, FDI, true openness, capital store, and employment are stationary FS difference in testing with intercept and trend. And capital store key is non-stationary FS difference in testing with intercept and trend. Furthermore, a real GDV growth rate does not have a unit rule and is stationary. Uh, FDI does not have a unit rule and is stationary. Trade opener does not have a unit rule and is stationary. Lastly, employment has greater than 0 0.05 speed value is statistically significant, but are have a unit rule and is not stationary. Capital store has greater than 0 0.05 speed value is statistically significant, but have a unit rule and is not stationary. This is my empirical story on the uh, estimated Lauren coefficient and resist. <laughs> Uh, the econometric results for the Lauren model are illustrated in this. which a decrease in economic growth by 0.83%. The empirical findings are very helpful for Myanmar trade policymakers because the results indicate that in the low end, trade openness negatively causes to economic growth. And the rolling window showed that the impact of trade openness on economic growth is not through throughout the summer. On the basis of Amrika Razad, this theory is suggesting the following policy implication. There is a need or real. And the short range estimated equation indicate that trade open edge is possibly related to economic growth at one year lag. Specifically, it was found that 1% increase in trade openness boosts economic growth by 2.200%. So, Myanmar need better policy to, towards the promotion or a spoke for non traditional goods and equally importantly, to ensure that the produce goods are able to complete internationally. Furthermore, improved trade policy were found to eradicate many trade restrictions that exporters encounter lower tariffs and moving towards liberalization should be adopted. This is, uh, this is the bound up. <clears throat> Boundary reserve. Boundary reserve is the calculated app statistic is seventeen point four nine seven eight seven, which are higher than the app bound critical values of four point three seven at the one percent level. That's the non hypothesis or non coegregation. Non coegregation is rejected. Richard Deck, implying Lauren co-integration relationship among the variable. This implying that there is a Lauren relationship.
Richard Aman, Ria Jadivi, FGI, Trade Openness, Capital Store and Employment over the period of 1992 to 2019 in Myanmar. Before estimating the Laurent relationship and the short-run dynamics of the model, it is important to analyze performance of the ALDA estimate through the diagonal index. This is my research results. Trade openness is negatively related to the economic growth in Laurent. Other things remain constant. FDI is negative relationship, economic growth, but it is significant. Shoran and Lauren growth affects our employment in Myanmar are significant and positive. Uh, positively and particular, the results show that for 1% point increase in employment, 41.564% GDP growth rate is introduced in the Lauren. According to the data analysis, 1% increase in FGI, increase real GDP to 3.187%. From this, we reject the Afghan increase in real GDP. Sure, an estimate equation indicates that trade openness is what found that 1% increase in trade openness boosts economic growth to 0.00%. <clears throat> This is my conclusion and recommendation, research finding. And we can research for the period 1990 to 2090. We can conclude that increase in employment and capital store affect the economic growth of Myanmar. Negative and insignificant low rank of integration research or trade openness with GDP contrary to the research and theory. Trade openness, uh, trade openness is the impulse plus export or goods and services divided by a GDP credit affected at the research or country level data for an official export or import. According to the theory, FDI seem to have a positive effect on the economic growth in Myanmar. Uh, the empirical did not show an increase in FDI affecting economic growth during the 1992 to 2019. The empirical results of the analysis might, might not provide the view support for expected outcome, explanatory variable, or trade openness, and FDI having a positive relationship to economic growth. Uh, the story cannot reject the hy hypothesis of no relationship between uh, explanatory variable and economic growth. Uh, this is my recommendation. The economic growth and trade openness has no relationship in Myanmar, so increase in employment and capital is strong and significant positive effects on economic growth. And FDR investment has no significant relationship with the economic growth in Myanmar. So this story assists policymaker in making sound decision to further grow of Myanmar economy. Uh, my future research trade openness and FDI play and critical role in Myanmar development. Further, uh, story trade openness to other neighboring countries such as Thailand, India, Bangladesh, and other countries carry the impact of FDI in Myanmar. Uh, and the next, uh, and the next slide, uh, and the next step is the to explain the story in very detail. More advanced model would be supported to the researcher for the accessible data. Similar regression model should be more relevant for some country for example in Myanmar. Uh, this is my conclusion and recommendation. This is my references. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, we'll limit to one question uh, for uh, the foreign direct investment uh, relationship with economic growth in Myanmar. Is If there is any uh, question, please uh, raise or uh, your voice. Maybe not. I have one question. And uh, uh, theoretically, FDI is supposed to have a positive relationship, in, even though it's not too strong. But your analysis shows that negative relationship with the economic growth in Myanmar. Is there a, a specific uh, a reason you can think of uh, briefly? Why is there uh, no, no or a negative relationship between two? Yes, um, our FGI is the negative relationship because of uh, because of my country is the political situation and the lack of the foreign in other countries foreign investor lack of the to influence the to influence the um, FGI, uh, FGI uh, goods and uh, goods and services so to uh, so. Um, this is very lack of uh, foreign investor. How <clears throat> um, um, to say is, um, uh, 
uh, because of um, lack of the foreign investor and uh, uh, to inflow to inflow the foreign country investment because of uh, my country is uh, my country is the uh, safe not safety and uh, um, uh, how, uh, how to say the tax uh, tax is very uh, very high so other country uh, other country not uh, not to entry for my country okay okay thank you for your presentation and answers and um, we'll move to the third uh, presentation of the session the third one will be uh, uh, presented by uh, Professor Kim Tae of Mandalay University of Distance Education. Uh, she will be presenting uh, factors affecting transportation activities of private trucking industry in Mandalay. Please. Good morning, everyone. Let me start my presentation. I am Kim Tae from Mandalay University of Distance Education. My topic is FATAS FAT, transportation activities of private trucking industry in Mandalay. My presentation is composed of four main facts. The first one, introduction. The second one is theoretical background. The third one is research design. And the final is findings and discussions. Let me start my introduction. Transportation is a very important activity in the logistics activity and is often the latest variable logistic cost. A major focus on logistics is the fiscal movement or flow of goods on the network that moves the product. This study highlights further affected transportation activities in terms of quality, speed, dependability, delivery, and flexibility on performance of private trucking industry. Let's move on to the next slide. By increasing the geographical market, okay, businesses are able to reach more customers oh, and generate higher levels of demand. There are many transportation services. Among the trucking industry associations and unique organization, which represent a large percentage of operators. To manage effectively and efficiently the delivery system, the industry needs to understand the essential elements of transportation activities. In my study, there are two main objectives. The first one, to identify factors affecting transportation activities of private trucking industry in Mandalay. The second one is to analyze the effects of FATAS FAT transportation activities of private trucking industry in Mandalay. Scope and methods of the study. The descriptive statistics and multiple regression analysis were used in this study. Simple random assembly method was used in this study. Primary data were collected from trucky industry and respondents are 60 owners of the trucky companies. Secondary data were gathered from relevant textbooks and internet website. The data collection period was in January 2021. To analyze the effects of influencing factors of transportation activities on transportation performance, multiple regression analysis was used. In this slide, the theoretical background is presented. Fatas FAT transportation activity. There are nine Fatas FAT transportation activity. They are human related Fatas, product related Fatas, market related Fatas, delivery related Fatas, economy related Fatas, distance related Fatas, volume related Fatas, service related Fatas, and the last one is cost related Fatas. In this slide, the theoretical background is presented. In my study, only four factors were studied. The first, they are product-related factors, service-related factors, market-related factors, and cost-related factors. In this slide, research design is presented. The study follows descriptive research. There are two main categories for methods of quality data, such as quantitative and qualitative. 
A total of 60 Turkey companies participated in the survey by filling, uh, by filling out an online questionnaire which contained a set of questions related to logistics management. Let me continue my research design. Correlation analysis was used to analyze the relationship between factors affecting transportation activities and transportation performance. Multiple regression analysis was used to analyze the effects of transportation activities on transportation performance. Demographic characteristics of respondents are analyzed by gender, age, education, and income level. In this table, demographic characteristics of respondents is presented. In gender, according to the nature of the industry, more male persons are participated. In, in each year of the study, most of the age group are 30 age between 30 years and 40 years. In education level of the study, most of the education level of the owners are <clears throat> high school level best. In the income level of the study, most of the respondents income level are between five lakh one and 10 lakhs, yes. Respondents by work experience is presented. Most of the respondents work experience are above six years. Reliability analysis is presented in debate three. According to the table, the value of proper FR value are above seven. Therefore, all variables proper FR values are acceptable level. Overall, mean values of factors affecting on transportation performance is presented in table form. The largest mean value is product related factor and the, less, the least mean value is service related factors. Correlation between factors of transportation activities and transportation performance is presented in table five. In this table, <clears throat> service related factor and cost related factor are strongly correlated with transportation performance. Multiple regression analysis of factors of transportation activities and transportation performance is presented in table six. According to the regression result, service-related factors and cost-related factors are significant, significant effect on transportation performance. Let's move to the next slide, findings and discussion. In my research findings from the questionnaire survey result, a summary or description or discrete analysis are done using statistical software. Immediately, all tracking companies are primary business and most are transported from Mandalay to Yangon. All tracking companies transport only products such as consumer goods, sporty, athletic goods, trains, fun products, and clothing within the country. According to the demographic data of 60 respondents, the majority of respondents who take part in interviews are me. Majority of age group are aged between 31 and 40 years. Mostly their education level is high school level and their work experiences are above six years. As performance indicator, increase in quality, increase in delivery, increase in dependability, increase in flexibility and reduce lead time are applied in this study. With reference to transportation performance, increase in flexibility has the maximum mean value. It indicates that trucking companies are able to adapt new circumstances. Based on the correlation analysis, all the independent variables, product-related factor, market-related factor, service-related factors, and cost-related factor have positive relationship with transportation performance. Service-related factors and cost-related factors are more influenced on transportation performance than other factors. In my findings, according to multiple regression research, the service-related factors and cost-related factors are directly and significantly impact on transportation performance, while other factors such as product-related factors and market-related factors have no effect on transportation performance. Based on the findings, primary, related, primary trucking industry in Mandalay is still weak in transportation practices as well as emphasizing 
the factors of transportation activity. Let me continue my suggestions and recommendations. According to the results of the study, service-related factors and cost-related factors are significant factors for transportation performance. The company should try to provide good service quality, which includes shorter transit time, on-time pickup, on-time delivery, reliable delivery and shipment security, and it helps to improve better transportation performance. Let me continue my suggestions and recommendation. If the companies could not use a well-operated transport system, it could not decrease transportation costs, and thus transportation performance could not improve. Moreover, companies should pay more attention on the factor which has no significant relationship with transportation performance. Product related factors are not significant with transportation performance, but the company should focus on delivery products to the destination on time and product damage free in transit. In this line, this further study is presented. There are certain limitations to the generalization of the study. This study only focuses on 60 private trucking companies in Mandalay. It is necessary to study transportation performance not only in private trucking companies in Mandalay, but also for types of transportation companies in other divisions. Further study should be done on other aspects of transportation management and how transportation activities can affect transportation performance. Market-related factors are not significant with transportation performance, but the company should concentrate highway traffic and the weather, which can disrupt services of their companies. Accidents are costly both to employees and company. In addition, the company should provide excellent service to customers and shippers than competitors. By doing so, the company should improve not only transportation performance, but also get competitive advantage in the market. This study also contribute to the companies by suggesting ways to enhance their transportation performance. Thank you for your attention and precious time. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, you kept in time, <laughs> amazing. Uh, and uh, our question is open to the floor if there is any question to Professor uh, Kinder Tve's presentation. Uh, please speak up. Yes. My presentation. I I was now. I was now at in Mandalay and my presentation we affect transportation performance in Mandalay division. Is there any other questions? I, I have a question on my own. Yes, if uh, after the uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, situation and the political changes you're going through right now, how far has those two events uh, affected your uh, transportation or trucking companies in Mandalay in terms of profits or the sales volume? <laughs> After co in the COVID-19 pandemic, this study was well studies in COVID-19 that way. In this, this, in this time, COVID-19 disease are, are still, still stable in Metal region. So there is uh, there is a weak situation. There is a weak situation in Mandalay division than other, uh, other division. Because of this, Mandalay is the second largest city in Myanmar and um, COVID-19 pyramid, <coughs> COVID pyramid affect the transportation performance in Mandalay region. So in my research, uh, two factors were uh, two factors were significant relationship with transportation performance. And uh, is there any other questions? No. Thank you for your presentation, Professor uh, uh, Kim Tetwe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe we uh, 
there are two more presentation on on the, on this session. Uh, they uh, they have sent their uh, presentation record uh, pre uh, before. Good evening, Chairman Ode, Korea Myanmar Research Association, Patterson, Audience of this International Conference. I am Yi Bu, Associate Professor, Department of Commerce. My research title is Motivation and Applying Job Certification at Bribe Banks in Jakarta. There are seven bars in my article. First, the introduction. Second, rationale of the story. Third, objectives of the story. And then, scope and methods of story. Concepts of framework of the story. Research and discussion. The last part is conclusion. Introduction, motivation, satisfaction, or advice. This becomes be a key issue of modern organizations because well motivated employees are essential for any business success. Call it to be 90 and key. Motivation can be defined as the willingness to achieve goals or rewards. Nowadays, the goals of all jobs are in times increasing attention in the organization as and accordingly, managers try to maintain the high level of job satisfaction among their employees, primarily for its impact on productivity, absenteeism, and high turnover and junior activity. Then, banks play a very important role in the economic life of the nation. The private banks, when city F, along with the emergence of financial institution of Myanmar law from 1992. Under that law, private banks were allowed to establish and operate it in Myanmar since 1992. Now, many private banks play an important role for digitalization and technological development. This represents rationale of the story. In Myanmar, private banks play a leading role in economic development because all private bank services depend on employees to achieve their business goals. Their certified employee can provide good service for customers and customer can become more loyal to the bank. As I chose this topic, to highlight the importance of motivation and employee just satisfaction to address and retain the affected workforce at private banking centers in Myanmar. There are two objectives in my story. The first objective is to analyze the most influential motivation factors on employee just satisfaction and employee performance. The second objective is to analyze the most influential hygiene factors on employee job satisfaction and employee performance. The slide shows scope and methods of study among a private banks in Jakarta. Five private banks are chosen as the best for close investigation because these banks have more employees than other banks and have a good reputation. 93 employees were selected by using cluster sampling methods for this study. Questionnaire methods has been used to call as primary data, descriptive statistics, reliability, PSM correlation, and multiple regression analysis has been applied to analyze questionnaire data. The slide present. Conceptual framework of the story. The conceptual framework is based on Harvard's two factor theory. According to the theory, achievement, the work itself, advancement, and career development are considered and the motivation factors. On the other hand, working condition, remuneration, relationship, and security are considered 
and a hygiene for this. The conceptual model and turn to its mind. The most influential motivation factors and the most influential hygiene factors on employee job satisfaction and employee performance. The slide shows demographic factors. The respondent who conducted incorporated them are the most 23.7. The respondent who conducted in Yuma Bank are the least 40%. More all respondents are female and the remaining are male employees. Respondents age group between 26 years and 35 years are the least, are the most 61.3%. Age group between 46 and 60 years are the least 4.3%. The respondent who perform at senior assistant position are the most 36.6%. And who perform at supervisor's position at the least 2.2%. The respondent was working experience between six and eight years at the most 47.3%. And working experience at the two years at the least 10.8%. Respondent was monthly salary between 200,000 won and 3 lakh are the most 38.7%. And monthly salary between 400,000 won and 5 lakh are the least 8.6%. This represents results from reliability and validity tests. The results indicate that. All reliability coefficient or questionnaire items are greater than 0 0.7 the recommended value. Results from validity test for all questionnaire items are above the recommended value 0 0.5, KMO greater than 0 0.5. Therefore, this instrument can be considered sufficiently as reliable and valid for the analysis. According to table 3, we have some correlation coefficients illustrate that there is positive relationship between motivation, hygiene factors, and employee justification. Correlation coefficient between achievement and employee job satisfaction is 0.39A at 1% significant levels. Then, the correlation coefficients between the work itself and employee job satisfaction is 0.277 at 1% significant levels. Correlation coefficient between advancement and employee job satisfaction is 0 0.566 at 1% significant levels. In addition, correlation coefficient between career development and employee job satisfaction is 0 0.704 at 1% significant levels. Correlation coefficient between working condition and applying job satisfaction is 0 0.719 and 1% significant levels. Then, correlation coefficient between remuneration and applying job satisfaction is 0 0.678, 1% significant levels. The correlation coefficient between relationship and Applying job satisfaction is 0 0.767 at 1% significant levels. The last correlation coefficient between securities and applying job satisfaction is 0 0.736 at 
at 1% secrete the gland level. According to table 4, PSN correlation coefficients illustrate that there is positive relationship between motivation and hygiene and employee performance. Correlation coefficient between achievement and employee performance is 0.344 at 1% significant levels. Then, the correlation coefficient between the work itself and employee performance is 0.343 at 1% significant levels. In addition, correlation coefficient between advancement and career developments, market condition, remunerations, relationship and security, and employee performance is 0 0.493, 0 0.709, 0 0.714, 0 0.674, 0 0.791, and 0 0.807 at 1% significant levels, respectively. According to table 5, multiple regression analysis is conducted with employee job satisfaction and motivation and hygiene factors. The adjusted R square is 0 0.673, that reveals 67.3% of total variance and just the diffusion is explained by the very base. Career development, working condition, relationship and securities are directly associated with employee just the diffusion. And then, career development is the more inspirational motivation factors on employee just the diffusion. And Relationship is the most influential hygiene factors on employee job satisfaction. According to David 5, multiple regression analysis is conducted with employee performance. The adjusted R square is 0 0.732, that reveals simply 3.2% of total variables in employee performance is explained by the variables. Career development, working condition, relationship and securities are directly associated with employee performance. A man then, career development is the most impression motivation factors and security is the most impression hygiene factors on employee performance. The last part is conclusion. Career development is the most impression motivation factors or employee justification. Therefore, private parents need to maintain career development by organizing counseling programs, training courses, and by allowing employees to improve performance, skill, and experience. Among motivation factors, achievement is the least influential factor on employee justification. Thus, private bank managers, assistant managers, and supervisors should always appreciate their employee achievement. Relationship is the most influential hygiene factors for employee job satisfaction. Therefore, private bank manager, assistant manager, and supervisors should maintain offering positive feedback and give proper support. In addition, co-workers should help each other and maintain good and positive relationship. Among hygiene factors, remuneration is the least influential factors on employee job satisfaction. Thus, private banks should also arrange their promotional opportunity clearly, fairly, and provide rewards 
when employee achieve their duty. Career development is also the most influential motivation for this and advancement is the least influential motivation for those on employee performance. Therefore, private parents need to choose career advancement rather than monetary incentive and provide training for employee advancement and personal growth. Security is the most influential hygiene for this on employee performance. Thus, private banks need to maintain for safety in the workplace and responsibility when employees get customer complaint and accidents in the workplace. A man hygiene for this, remuneration is also the least influential for this on employee performance. Thus, private banks need to give possibility to be promoted in employee performance and create promotional opportunities. In addition, the organizations need to provide the reward system that they are employee in charge. Thank you. Please your variable suggestion and comments. Okay, thank you for the presentation. And uh, uh, I, I see uh, Professor A.E. Paul uh, on the screen. Hello. Are you ready to uh, have some uh, questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, now the question is open to the floor. If there is any question to Professor E. Paul, you can have it right now. Any question? I'm bored. No question. Would, uh, uh, you, ha you have analyzed uh, uh, private banking uh, industries. Is there uh, any big difference between the public banks and private banks in terms of the treatment of uh, employees and their environment and wages and so forth? Is there any big uh, difference? Yeah. 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 I think a uh, little difference uh, between uh, public and private banks uh, because um, uh, public banks Okay, uh, we have uh, about 15 minutes uh, to the end of the session, so we'll uh, conclude uh, 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 Professor Yi Po's presentation. Thank you for your participation. And the last one on this session is uh, on the role of the cooperative microfinance. And the presentation uh, will be done by Do Soe Wu Ne uh, of uh, CUS. And uh, uh, she has sent uh, the presentation materials beforehand. So we'll uh, play uh, a presentation first and we'll open to the questions. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, may I introduce myself. I am So Yun Wei, Professor, Head of the Department of Ovidian Studies, Ovidian University, Sakai, Myanmar. 
the dry day of my paper is the rule of providing microfinance in the socioeconomic development of member, a case study of semi agricultural and generally cooperative society limited center place the kind of shit. I would like to present the content, introduction, material, and method, result, or analysis data conclusion. Next, I would like to present the introduction. Myanmar is a major agricultural country, and more than 70% of the country population live in rural area. Therefore, agriculture is the main business of the rural population. However, due to the uncertainty and risk of climate change, economic instability, and the lower price of their crops, farmers are engaged in a variety of economic activity to improve their socioeconomic status. The development of a country depends on the socioeconomic development of the people live in rural. However, one of the main problems for the socioeconomic development of the village is need of capital to carry on their businesses. Also, the government had a number of development initiatives to develop rural areas. Many institutions, such as microfinance institutions, are significant median for the improvement of rural population and pursuit. Government agencies, many private organizations, and NGOs are occur to elaborate the economic and social problems of the rural economy and community at the grassroots level in Myanmar. And those organizations, cooperative also include, in fact, cooperative welfare in, first introduced in Myanmar in 1904. According to the 1904 credit act by India government, the first CV and credit of cooperative society aimed at pharma was formed on 3 January 1905 in, in Myanmar as the Mudanshi Sakai Division. Basically, Myanmar cooperative society are found by tiny a group of people to collectively meet economic, social, cultural, social, cultural needs and aspirations of their members, which cannot be done by individually. There are various kinds of agricultural cooperatives in Myanmar. Most of them are multi barber cooperatives and rainy businesses, which are related to agriculture, including microfinance for farmers. The agricultural cooperative society are operating not only agricultural business, but also for the CV and credit activities. The animated aim of agricultural and general trade cooperative is to go to and distribute agricultural products and to provide the need of farmers. Agricultural cooperative contribute real development and poverty elevation by carry out. The main agricultural and general trade cooperative society limited is a multi barber organization which provides its members with distribution of agricultural input and law. In addition, now it wants to different daily repayment system with high interest rate. Semi Agricultural and General Trade Cooperative Society Limited was established as St. Tablet Sakai Township Sakai region in 1895. At the beginning, there were 100 members and it was ran. A business with 15,000 jet as a share capital of the society. The society restructured in 1992 and the 1992 cooperative society law promulgated by Ministry of Cooperatives. In 1993, the society was only five members and they started to run their business in agriculture. Later, they extended microfinance as a brand of their business. In 2003, the Ministry of Cooperative provided loan to the British through Cooperative Society. At that time, Semi Agricultural and General Trade Cooperative Society Limited had 300 members and it was responsibility to provide loan to the member with low interest rate. Therefore, this research started to determine the role of microfinance for the socioeconomic development of the member in Center Agricultural and General Trade Cooperative. Next, I would like to present material and method. Both primary and secondary data collection were used for this study. The secondary data were collected from different websites, research paper, WASI paper, and NGO report, etc. In order to collect primary data at the case study, semi agricultural and general trade cooperative society limited was selected and focused on the study. A question now was given to 100 members randomly subject. Semi Agricultural and General Trade Cooperative Society Limited, Centerblade in 2019. 
the data were analyzed by his credit studies. Next, I would like to present result of data and like it. The data shows that socioeconomic characteristics of the respondent. The socioeconomic very, very well, very well considered for this study, including such age, family size, education status, income, and type of business. According to data, May consist of 58% and female consist of 42%. This study reveals the age of respondents. 50% of respondents belong to the age bracket of above 50 years. The remaining respondents are either below 35 years or between 35 and 50 years. Family size shows the 54% of respondents belong to the household type of between 5 and 10 members. 46% of respondents belong to the household type of below 5. Next, education data show that most of respondents, 55% of respondents are primary education. The remaining respondents are as shown in table. And can show that 37 percent of respondents has less than 50 thousand jet as monthly income. 40 percent of respondents has between 50 thousand jet and 10 hundred thousand jet as monthly income. 23 percent of respondents had a vet hundred thousand jet as monthly income. This study reveals the style of business. 52% of respondents had work in agriculture. 35% of respondents are doing integrated family. 4% of respondents contribute to livestock. 9% of respondents are doing for others. This slide shows the utilization of law. According to figure, 60% of respondents Choose the loan to sell a new business or to expand the ACC business. 23% of respondents use the loan to educate their children education. The remaining respondents use the loan to buy household utility to repay, to repay an ACC loan and to use for other. Next, this slide shows the perspective of microfinance on retention in poverty. According to figures, 39% of respondents had barely, had barely, barely that microfinance has reduced their poverty to a, to a greater extent. 59% of respondents wanted to extend a larger amount of law. Remaining respondents are as shown in figures. Next, this slide shows the impact on microfinance on socioeconomic status of member. According to figures, the microfinance has been impact on impact on member in their sense because when providing loan to their member, 50% of respondents have been able to use the law to start in generating a degree. 25% of respondents have been able to use to educate their children. 20% of respondents have been able to use the law to purchase household utility. The remaining respondents have been able to use law to make CV to increase their income. Next slide shows the, the rules of microfinance in the socioeconomic development of member. According to table, 82% of respondents accepted the positive impact of microfinance on their economic status. 74% of respondents accepted the positive impact of microfinance on their social status. 
because when membership low, banking is obligated to sign the to sell business to increase their income, to support their children education, to make TV and to solve their social problem. So there is the rule by poverty credit. Poverty microfinance and social economic development of member. Finally, I would like to present conclusion. According to data analysis, it can be easily concluded that microfinance is playing an important role in increasing their income of member and they can use the loan to improve their livelihood. Even those majority of member literacy level are very low. They can use high proportion or loan for study a new business or for expanding their existing business and for their children education. It is note that most of the respondents spend loan without any waste. They are expected to extend more and larger amount of loan and they want to get scenery and can to improve their living standard and social welfare. Ms. Menembar or respondent asserted that microfinance has brought in economic development directly and indirectly, and thus happiness and peace in their family. And Barson, our respondent, said that they surely cause such depression on interest rate upon law. Poverty society should increase their site or loan to their member, expand their business and for their socioeconomic development or their people live in real. Microfinance survey should expand their property area to include social loan settled for children and for worry as well as for non-economic as well lies to fee. All respondents had received on loan by gradually increasing their saving money and provided a good habit or saving. Microfinance program positively affect on their livery condition of rural household who participated in the program. In fact, in their income CV, many and housing were improved. This study revealed that there is a big role played by microfinance in the socioeconomic development of Manbar or semi-agricultural and general trade cooperative society limited in St. Tablet. This is because the asset and utilization of microfinance service had given their Member the opportunity to test asset to capital to start small enterprise or expanding their enterprise set and they are in can a in they are in can as a as a increase as a research as increase as a research the research from this study get concrete as to the use of properties and machinery for rural transformation and socio-economic development of member in center blade Microfinance has a deep influence on the economic state, decision making power, knowledge, and subordinate all participants of cooperative society in St. Bridge. Today, microfinance is striving to match the convenience and flexibility of common sector, while adding flexibility and coordinate. Microfinance is a success as a vital tool for attaining and maintaining the sustained and long term economic growth not only in Myanmar, but also in all over the world. Thank for your uh, attention. Presentation. Uh, uh, is, uh, so, so when I, uh, in the, on the line, please uh, raise your hand. Okay, okay. Ready, ready to get an answer uh, or questions? Thank you. Uh, if there is any question for the a presentation on microfinance. This is your chance. Please raise your hand. Any question? Or you can just speak up uh, for the present. What, uh, I, I have one question if there isn't any. Uh, yet. Uh, uh, you said uh, uh, very positive uh, uh, aspects of microfinance in, in Myanmar. And, uh, is it going to be that way uh, for a time being for a few more years, do you think? Okay. 
chat many micro yes i my Okay, I'll take that as a yes <laughs> to my question. And uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for everybody. Thank you for present, uh, present, presenter, uh, presenters and uh, attendees. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>